Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder has been controversial in use for a while now. From the initial waves of mass diagnoses to misdiagnoses to the worry of over-medicating children. Today we take a look at what ADHD actually is, dispel a few myths and look at the warning signs and discuss the management of the condition with our panel of experts. With me is Dr. Lerata Masemola, Dr. Darren Green and Lisa Raleigh. Welcome to Doctor's Orders. Thank you. So ADHD is actually being diagnosed a lot now. They say that 7% of children aged 6 to 12 are being diagnosed with ADHD, and this equates to around 50 million children worldwide. What is ADHD? In simple terms, what we need to know is that it's an inability to have sustained concentration over a period of time. That's the attention deficit part. The hyperactivity part is the motor part, the the actual hyperactivity, the busyness of motor symptoms. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting to note is that many people have traits in their personality, in their behavior, in their day-to-day activities of being somewhere on the spectrum of having some form of attention deficit or some hyperactivity disorder. What most people don't know is that the entities can coexist or they can actually occur separately as well. And what's interesting here is that children themselves... In general, children are, are naturally busy bodies. distractible. Yeah, busy. So it must be very, very difficult to make the diagnosis mm. because children are naturally distractible. At what point is too much? Well, it's also important to note that not all children will develop at the same rate for everything, okay? So you have to look at the child holistically, you know, in terms of their personal development, you know, their esteem and how they're growing as a person. Academically, when they start going to creche or school, how do they interact with their peers? So I think, you know, you have to observe all three and see how the child is developing. Is there a problem in Mm -hmm. all three or at one point of those? So parents have to pay very close attention because once the diagnosis is made, it, they've got implications on the child's life going yes. forth. Yes. So you have to have that multidisciplinary um, team, parents and, and, and others, a psychiatrist, a psychologist and an occupational therapist and everybody must sit down and look at the child as a whole and not just jump to, this child's Conclusions. always jumping around and therefore they've got ADD. Yes, it has <laughs> yes. to be a very, very, very focused on approach. Mm-hmm. And a sensitive one And as a well. sensitive mm-hmm. one. You mm-hmm. can't just make the diagnosis haphazardly. No. Right? And you have to get the psychologists and involved. The psychiatrist, the psychiatrist, and the occupational therapist, you know, look at speech and audiology. Perhaps this child has an auditory processing problem. Yes. And yeah. you, they, they may be able to do certain things, they can hear properly, but maybe the message is not going from, I gave you an instruction to their brain saying, I need to follow on. Yes. You know, so some things can be picked up and you can correct that one little aspect instead of just blanket diagnosing the child as having ADHD. Okay, so now what are the causes for ADHD? Yeah, so primarily um, on the biolo- biological basis in the brain, the frontal lobes are very important in concentration and yes. focus. And with ADD or ADHD, there's, it's, it's been shown that there's a shortage of, of activity mm-hmm. from the frontal lobe uh, with the working of, of dopamine. So what are the mimickers? Because uh, sometimes it's not a- ADHD, but it looks like ADHD. That's very, very common. Diet. Um, diet. Yeah, I mean, kids, the food in front of me here, a lot of kids are eating those kind of foods in their lunch boxes, at parties on the weekends. And if any child had to eat, you know, 2,000 calories of sugar or processed foods, they're going to land up bouncing around the room and off the walls. Yes. And parents might misdiagnose that. Yes. And also when it comes to technology, you know, there's enough, there's, there's the right amount of technology, you know, an hour a day of their favorite a television program or games or any kind of stimulus and then there's overboard so yes. we need technology timeouts yes. so you need to set limits because i think they, reward. they're also yes. learning from the parents because our natural lives involved yeah. moving in, in between the phones and they see exactly. and they mimic us yeah so they get and overstimulated also, and they get hyper they're in the middle of a game and afterwards they're all jumping around because they're excited about it mm. doesn't make them adhd mm-hmm. however but other things which may yes. mimic you know the hyperactivity is Apart from the food you put into your child's body, medicines, medicines. okay, and you know, yeah. read the bottle or the, or the box insert and see how much sugar is in there and opt for sugar free. So to be more conscientious of what you're giving your child and just don't give everything and anything just because you're trying to... So uh, drinks. caffeine mm-hmm. is, drinks, a, is yeah. another one, you know, um, giving fizzy drinks, there's caffeine in, in most fizzy drinks, yeah. but also you, you should not be giving your children mm. green tea, regular tea or coffee, yeah. ever, all ever, so mm. herbal teas, yes, but you know, even a green tea has you got know, natural caffeine. You know, kids waking up and watching cartoons with yeah. a cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not, and now you get mini cappuccinos at restaurants. Yes, they do. Mm. Baby, you know, chinos. Is, baby, baby chinos. Baby chinos. Yes, what is 
you said about children should not Slowly be drinking. having yeah. coffee and tea in their diet. Rooibos, rooibos, you know, chamomile, those kinds of teas. Double infusion. Yeah. So it's a natural tendency. Obviously, it's a difficult diagnosis to make. But once you make the diagnosis in a multidisciplinary way with a lot of people involved, what are the treatments out there? Natural is always going to be best, you know. Yeah. So introducing the right kinds of foods into your children's lives, so making sure that they're getting lots of fruits and vegetables, your lean proteins, your unprocessed whole grain carbohydrates and your good quality fats and to supplement with 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams of your kiddies version of your fish oils and the vitamin B complex, about 50 milligrams a day of vitamin B because that's for the central nervous system, so it helps with concentration and focus. So from a nutritional point of view, a balanced healthy diet, taking out refined carbohydrates, sugary foods, um, MSG and any type of preservatives is also a no-no and then rather incorporate that as treats. Um, and weekend parties, you can't overcome those things. So deal with them when they happen. Mm. The and uh, you can't. You know, it's actually more for the parents. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, when it comes to exercise, you know, it is the parents' responsibility to make sure that your children are exercising. So if they're not old enough to have school compulsory sport, what are you doing with them at home? Having a mini trampoline, uh, running around the garden, a volleyball net, what games are you playing, pillow fights, get them to expend energy because you have to increase the serotonin levels, the natural dopamine levels of the body is, is really good when it comes to exercise. It's, mm-hmm. that's what, it happens no matter what. Those hormones are secreted and will help with your child's concentration and focus mm-hmm. and mood. Yeah. You know, that happy yeah. hormone mood. I mean, what's also important is that, you know, a lot of time for the child to wind down yes. at night, you know, you know, remove all the sensory stuff, all the technology, mm-hmm. well ahead before bedtime, so yes. that you're not know, likely to put them down as well. So you're going to jump on the trampoline outside at 5 o'clock, and then they come back inside, and then they do routine. Yes. Routine, mm-hmm. children need to expect or know when to, what, what to no, expect, exactly, yeah. and then they can also help them to stick to doing things on a daily basis according to that routine. Mm-hmm. So it helps their minds to follow uh, and complete tasks if, if they yeah. know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Parents have to be hands-on. This is not something you can just throw mm-hmm. medicine at and, and, and hope for the better. So you also have to make time in your life for your children, especially a child who may have extra needs, such as a child who's been diagnosed with ADHD. Mm-hmm. And it's very difficult in today's lifestyle. We know yes. we all work very late and we stuck in traffic and the nannies and the au pairs do the homework with their kids and or the kids do the homework alone. So you have to actually take a, a decision to be actively involved in, in this child's life to help them mm-hmm. so that you know, their future is actually even better. So they actually yeah. develop better. Yeah, and now let's talk about the medical treatment, Ritalin. Mm-hmm. This is something parents hear yeah, about a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, well, it's, it's methyl phenylphenidate. Yes. And uh, how that actually works is it helps the nerve endings release more dopamine which is important to focus and to concentrate and so on but as we've discussed there are a few other things that can also help release dopamine in your lifestyle in our in the, the other alternative therapies that we've discussed so medically it does work what's negative about it there's a lot of side effects yep. uh, so things like uh, the gastrointestinal things like nausea vomiting headaches uh, insomnia is a very big one and then not to mention stomach cramping for example and behavior behavioral changes mm-hmm. like dips in energy and aggression sometimes mm-hmm. in, in some children and you even have to take ritalin holidays yeah. Well, it's advised. Mm-hmm. Eh? It's advised that you don't take it over the weekends, maybe do Monday to Friday. I mean, you often hear that, that the parents will say, my child is not him or herself. They're a bit dull on the yes. medicines, you know. Mm-hmm. So just look out for those things. Know what to expect if your child has to be on the medicine so that there's no frustration on either side from the parent and the child. Any final mm-hmm. tips or advice? Yeah, when it comes to, to relaxation time, it's also been proven to be very useful with ADHD kids. Um, massage is really good. So if you're not going to send them to a massage therapist at the age of six, then you can spend five, ten minutes at night reading and then give them a little massage. And that's been help- that, that helps with the insomnia. It also really helps them to chill out. So once the diagnosis has been made and the multidisciplinary team all agree that the child has those symptoms, yep. you know, one should not despair. There's very good prognosis. Some kids, most in fact, don't have to take medicine up to high school. There has to be a point of reassessment, and yes. it's very important for continued reassessment because at some point the child, you know, the condition corrects itself, or the medicine has worked, and now the brain has its own sustained release of dopamine, and yes. there's no need to continue. But also, don't forget that you have to treat it because if you don't treat it, there could be other complications. No, certainly. And so, if the diagnosis is missed early on in the child's life, it could have dire consequences. And parents often are afraid of the stigma that goes with it, thinking that their role has been the main cause. Mm. 
mm. whereas there's a very strong genetic link in the cause of, of ADHD. So children with ADD can develop mood disorders and things like depression later on in life if it's not addressed. And there also has been evidence for association between ADHD but the hyperactivity disorder part developing conduct disorders. Yes. And uh, certainly one wouldn't want to let your child go down that road if you can prevent it. Mm. Thank you so much guys for sharing your expertise once again on Doctor's Orders.